Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. I want to welcome you to our Caneo Valley Unified School District TK and K School Choice and Parent Information Night webinar. We're excited to have um, nearly 200 families who will be joining us this evening. We're very proud of our, to be a school choice district and to offer a variety of unique programs and schools throughout our elementary, middle school, and high school um, schools. And we're especially proud of our model um, TK and K programs and and the um, supports and services that we provide our youngest learners. And we're going to share more about those um, services here this evening. My name is Sonia Wilson and I'm the Director of Elementary Education. And I'm joined here this evening by a wonderful panel, including Lou Lichtel, our Assistant Superintendent of Instructional Services, Dr. Lisa Miller, our Assistant Superintendent of Student Support Services, Amy Mills, our Director of Child Development, Mary Beth Stovall and Mindy Champlin, our TK teachers, Carrie Sonstegard and Susan Beck, our Kinder teachers, and Andy Barmacy, our Senior Administrative Assistant. We're going to start our webinar by providing some general information about TK and K. And TK stands for um, transitional kinder and kindergarten. And before we start that, um, I do want to share, we will have an opportunity at the end um, to have you share questions you ha have and also for us um, to provide some you know, additional information and responses to those questions. So I'd ask you to go ahead and hold on um, providing those questions in the chat and then we'll open up um, that discussion time at the end. Hi, everybody. Um, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I am Lisa Miller, the Assistant Superintendent of Student Services. Um, I do want to just briefly share that if you are in need of uh, interpretation uh, for Spanish interpretation, we unfortunately um, don't have that um, available tonight, but we will be scheduling a subsequent webinar um, that will be delivered in Spanish and we will message that out to our families for when that is available and we, and we really apologize for it. Um, so if, um, if you're not able to access the, the English presentation tonight, we will be having another one that will cover exactly the same information delivered in Spanish and we'll get that date and time out to our families as soon as possible. So uh, what I wanna uh, speak to on this slide is enrollment. Uh, so there's a couple steps that you really need to be aware of as a family to complete the enrollment process. So if you are enrolling a child for transitional kindergarten, uh, TK does require you to complete the school choice application. Um, that is different from um, being in kindergarten. Um, TK, uh, we don't have a TK at all of our elementary sites, therefore it is still a choice process for every family. Uh, so that is your first step is to complete that and that application is available. Um, it just opened up um, at the beginning of this month. Once, if you're a TK family, once you've completed that school choice application, you're going to follow the steps I'm about to review for our families of um, future kindergartners. So we do need all families to complete the pre-enrollment process and the link is there and we will make sure you get that link. Um, this is uh, the completion of several required forms and is the first step in beginning your enrollment process. Um, once you've completed these pre-enrollment documents, um, they are then received by a school site office manager. And that school site office manager then will um, work with you to complete the next step of the enrollment process. So I wanna be clear that when you complete the pre-enrollment part, that's not the final step that results in your child being enrolled. It's actually the entry step. The final step is um, when you're in communication with the school site office manager that gets you to the completed enrollment process. Um, so again, just to reiterate, if you're a family looking to enroll for TK, you do need to complete the school choice application. If you're a family um, planning to enroll for kindergarten, um, your child will be automatically assigned to their neighborhood school unless 
you also opt to complete, um, well, you have the option to complete the school choice application, but you, as an incoming kindergartner, there is an automatic assignment. Um, and then you complete the pre-enrollment documents. And then once you've connected with the school site office manager, you are now um, at the completion of the enrollment process. And so, so Dr. Miller, if I could just uh, provide a little bit of clarification just so that we're uh, really clear. So our TK students, you do not pre-enroll until after you've been approved uh, through my office, through the Instructional Services Office. And Andy Barmacy uh, is the individual that processes all those applications for the school district. And so as you apply for TK and you are placed, you'll be hearing directly uh, from Mrs. Barmacy through email. And once you have been placed and approved uh, through that email, then at that point, uh, you would do the enrollment process. Thank you so much, Mr. Lichtel. Yeah, that's an important clarification. Um, so as you begin your enrollment process, it's important to know that as children begin to enter public schools in California, there are legal requirements um, related to immunizations. Um, so there is a link on this slide that will give you a lot of good information about what shots and immunizations are required, what's the age range of your child when they should be getting these shots, um, and there's also information in there um, that speaks to whether or not uh, you can continue to enroll your child without immunizations. I just want to be clear that in 2016, the state of California passed legislation that um, personal beliefs um, can no longer um, permit you to not have your child immunized. Um, so all children do need to be immunized as they begin to enroll um, in public schools. And in order to access the public schools, um, they will need to have that um, immunization record completed and submitted to the school district. We acknowledge that um, this year has been a unique year across um, the country for all schools and, and all districts. And here in CBUSD, we have um, tried to design a program to meet the diverse needs of all of our um, parents and families and, and students and, and their preference for, for how they want to receive instruction this year. So we've created a blended learning option, a remote learning option, and our Shine Homeschool um, instructional model. And these are the three options that our families have chosen this year um, as part of um, their services for um, TK through 12. But specifically, I wanted to highlight um, that our TK through 2 students will be returning to campus um, on November 9th. So we are excited that our, our teachers are engaging in final preparations of their classrooms and they're getting um, you know, their the campus ready and their classrooms ready so that students will be able to um, enjoy that first day of school um, on November 9th. And this year, um, something unique to, um, to our, across our elementary and middle school campuses, but specifically in our TK program, um, we group students together across multiple sites with a TK teacher in order to provide remote learning options to families. So um, TK students are actually um, working alongside with um, students from across the district. So this has been um, a great model um, this year um, within our TK program. We have offered, um, we have a number of sites where we offer um, transitional kindergarten. And um, this year we were only able to offer the the program at the sites that you see listed on the screen that have a check mark on them. But looking ahead to the 2021-22 school year, um, we will continue and or if we continue to offer um, remote and blended options for families, we will base um, our availability of TK programs at these current sites. Um, and it will all be based on enrollment capacity and need. So if we do need to um, you know, not offer the TK program at a couple sites, um, we will shift those students to, um, to enjoy uh, the program with, with an alternate teacher from a different site. So currently the sites listed here um, that have check marks are the locations um, that we have our current programs running this year. 
So we have a number of age requirements for um, transitional kindergarten and for kindergarten. So for transitional kindergarten, the eligible birthdays are from July 1st, 2016 to um, December 2nd, 2016. And students born um, in that window of July 1st to September 1st, they're actually eligible for either transitional kindergarten or kindergarten. But we recognize and, and just want to remind parents that kindergarten students must turn five by that September 1st um, of 2021. And we do strictly adhere to these birth date ranges um, to determine our enrollment. So I know you may have questions about, um, you know, if your child has a birthday inside or outside that window. And so we do follow these, these guidelines, um, you know, to make those placements and determination for um, which grade level that students will be in. Now I'd like to provide you with some general information about school choice. So it's at CBUSD, um, we are considered a school choice program. And that means that parents and families have the flexibility to look outside of their neighborhood school and apply um, to join a, a school site that they may have um, a specialized program in, or it may be um, a specific school site that, that a parent has maybe another family member at. And so we do provide this flexibility to families to, um, to consider all the options that we provide um, within the school district. And we do have you know, wonderful schools and programs to offer parents. And so parents do have that option to engage in the school choice process um, to have the opportunity to attend another school site. I'd like to also highlight some of our specific uh, magnet schools and specialized programs that we offer in the district. Um, we have four um, distinct programs including um, Acacia Magnet School for Enriched Learning. And Acacia is you know, a program that offers unique and enriched learning experiences for students that really um, builds upon students' individual talents and abilities to, to help them develop and, and flourish um, as a unique uh, student. We also have our Earth uh, Magnet School, which is an environmental science and technology program. And Ladera Stars Academy, this is also a science-based program. Um, they focus on science, technology, arts, and rigorous scholarship. And we also have the Open Classroom Leadership Magnet, also known as OCLM. And this is a program um, that is student-centered, experiential, and also has um, a focus on leadership. There are some important timelines um, to consider when, um, cons when um, selecting the school choice process. So the most important timeline um, already opened up. It's our November 1st window for school choice applications being available. And then on January 31st, um, the school choice applications um, are due in order to be eligible for the lottery. And they're actually due by 5 p.m. that evening. So that's January 31st. By March 16th, um, decision letters will be emailed to families, and these will um, designate whether a family has been accepted um, to their school of choice or their position on the wait list. And then August 18th of 2021, this is the, the last day to apply for school choice um, for any CBUSD elementary school or middle school. And then on September 30th of 2021, that will be when our school choice waitlist is canceled and we will no longer be honoring um, any students to enter a, a school of choice based on their um, waitlist eligibility. The next part of our webinar, we will hear from our esteemed um, TK teachers and kindergarten teachers. So we're joined here this evening by Mary Beth Stovall and Mindy Champlin as well as Carrie Sonstegard and Susan Begg, and they will be sharing more specifics about the TK and Kinder programs. You know, uh, Mrs. Wilson, if it's okay, before we get into that, I, I did want to uh, just, again, add some clarification. We do accept our uh, TP, TK applications through the first week of May. Uh, for next year would be uh, May 2001. And uh, in addition to that, there was a couple questions in the chat that I think are important for everyone. So let me um, 
if, if you don't mind, give me one moment to review those. There was a question about if I'm approved for a, my school of choice for TK, um, and that's where I'd like my kindergartner to attend the following year. That's that same student. Am I automatically placed at uh, that, that school for kindergarten? The answer is no. You apply for TK, we will, we will uh, place you at a TK school. And then the following year, if, uh, if you want to choice to a school that's not your home school, then at that point you would have to apply um, for that new, that new placement. Now, if your school of choice for TK is your home school, and that's where you want your youngster to continue for kindergarten, then yes, you would, they would matriculate directly to their home school. If it's not the home school, then you would have to reapply. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Lichtel. All right. I'm going to go ahead and speak to you all about some of the similarities between transitional kindergarten and kindergarten. First of all, we both programs utilize a curriculum that's been approved by our school board. So it's a well thought out program that is both developmentally and academic, academically appropriate for the children. In both programs, the children are able to participate in specialists at their school, and that depends on their site what this might look like. But for instance, TK and K kids all get to have um, an art program or a, go to the computer lab. They get to go to the library and be read to by li our librarians weekly, check out books from the library. They can also participate in things like music and the physical education. And like I said, that would look different depending on what is offered at the sites, but they are able to participate in what the rest of the school is participating in. Um, these children are also um, able to participate in field trips, assemblies, and musical performances. So in a year that's a typical school year, you might be able to go to the Civic Arts Center to see a play or to the farm or, again, site, site related and what happens there. But both these groups are able to participate in the same activities at the school. Um, I'm going to do the second part of it. Um, all of our kindergarten and TK students are going to follow the CVUSD discipline policies and their guidelines. Um, as well as whatever site that they're at, the additional rules and, and uh, guidelines that they have for each site. Um, each TK and kindergarten student will have access to school and district resources, including health plans, free lunches, and any other programs that might be available. And also the TK and kindergarten students are gonna have access to three report cards for each school year, as well as three progress reports when needed, when, as well as parent conferences in October. Hi everyone, I'm Mindy Champlin. I'm a TK teacher at Walnut Elementary and I'm gonna talk a little bit about how TK is different from kindergarten. Um, we have content standards, they are induced and the mastery is encouraged, although we, um, our philosophy in TK is we follow the three E's where we basically want to provide exposure um, and experience and um, exploration. And so those standards, though we do want them to be mastered, we offer that as something that is still just an exposure to them as well. Um, our pace and guidance is developmentally appropriate. We, we really do focus a lot in the beginning of the school year on their social and emotional development, um, just getting used to the school setting and the classroom setting. Um, that's a big part of TK. Um, the students uh, matriculate to kindergarten. They do go on to kindergarten after TK. Um, it's almost like a two-year program of kindergarten where we really get them ready for um, kindergarten, which is, um, you know, when I look back at when my daughters were in kindergarten, um, it was more like TK now, um, and kindergarten has a lot more standards that they follow. So we really do give them that bridge that's needed from um, TK to prepare them for kindergarten. Um, our lessons and activities are differentiated depending on the child's abilities or even interests. Um, we also base our lessons and activities off of um, different modalities in teaching them. We have 
whole group um, lessons. We do small group lessons where we have a reading group or a math group that has four to six students in each group, as well as our peer grouping, which um, looks like um, it's a one-on-one -on -one, um, peer grouping that um, is placed in a literacy center where um, they are doing theme-based activities. Um, and then our homework is more of a hands-on and open-ended homework. Um, we don't really put pencil to paper. We do ask that there's a 20 minute time period each day for reading. Um, we also do um, let them experience taking home a homework folder each day and bringing it back each day, which really does allow them to build those um, responsibilities um, for their years beyond TK and and into elementary years. Um, and then we do offer some enrichment, which also falls along those um, lines of differentiating. We allow some enrichment um, choice boards that go home every week where they are more open-ended um, and you get to choose whether you wanna focus on a fine motor skill or maybe even um, a kinetic skill where they're moving their bodies or an art skill. So it's a choice up to the child and the family, but it is not mandatory. And I'm Carrie Sonstigard, and I'm a kindergarten teacher at Acacia Magnet School. And so today I'm going to talk about kindergarten specifically. So probably the key difference between the TK and the kindergarten is the mastery of all content standards is expected for all students. So we're looking at a lot of times some of the curriculum may look similar. However, the expectation by the end of kindergarten is that they know all the letter names as well as all the sounds, including the long and short vowel sounds. So they're, they're ready to read. By the time they're leaving kindergarten, they are readers. And in terms of mathematics, we go all the way up to counting past 100 doing addition and subtraction. And all of these things are expected that children master them. Whereas the TK curriculum is a great opportunity for kids to try these things, to practice it with hands-on, to, to really get an experience with it. But once they are in kindergarten, there is the uh, expectation that they master those standards and skills. Then the second part of that would also be that our curriculum is faster paced. When we're looking at a kindergarten language arts curriculum, for example, the letters are introduced kind of slow rolling at the beginning. We review all the letter names and then the sounds are introduced weekly. But later in the year, there are even two sounds a week as well as multiple sight words within one week. So the pace and rigor within kindergarten is, is faster for all children. And with that, we also add the, the third component, which would be that students are a little more independent. We're looking for, in a typical year, we are looking for students to um, work at a station or a center independently while the teacher works with another small group of students. There may or may not be another adult in the classroom, whereas the TK does have the aid support for their morning rotations. That's not always present daily within a kindergarten classroom. So children are really working on managing their own materials, being able to pace themselves. And of course, this is all modeled and guided within a kindergarten classroom. And once you finish kindergarten, you would matriculate right on to first grade. So there would be a, a, a natural step there. And the lessons and activities are always differentiated within the classroom, depending upon their students' levels and needs. We know that when we're blessed to get, to get transitional kindergartners that go right into the kindergarten curriculum, these are our leaders. These are our shining stars, the children that are just ready to perform with all of these difficult kindergarten tasks and really bloom into fabulous readers and excellent mathematicians. And it, it's, it's quite a blessing to have a, a classroom filled with some TK experts in the room. And then lastly, the homework assignments would vary by site to site. Certain sites have different homework expectations based on either their magnet school program, but all of the homework would be uh, aligned with the curriculum within the kindergarten standards. Next, I'd like to introduce Amy Mills, our Director of Child Development, and she'll be sharing more about CBUSD Child Care.
Hello, everyone. Um, we offer childcare at every um, elementary school site, and we are a parent paid program. Um, and that means we have um, childcare at all of our schools are with the parent paid program. So if you enroll in childcare, our TKs and Ks, our staff will escort students to their classroom and pick them up at the end of every day from their classroom. Um, we're anticipating that things will be uh, normal next year. Um, and if that's the case, um, we typically offer a, an enrichment hour. Um, that's normally from 1.30 to 2.30 with the TKs and Ks only. Um, and then we have an option also, if you need extended care, you can have 7.30, 7 to 8.30 in the morning, and then that 1.30 to, until six o'clock at night is another option that we have. Um, for our enrichment hour, we really try to build on some of the skills and things that students are working on in their classrooms. So we might do science experiments or cooking projects. Um, we prepare some letter and number games for students. They have block and puzzle play and art projects. Um, if you're staying for the extended care in the afternoon, um, we do have a snack and outdoor play time and then um, there's time that they work on homework, if that's something that students have. And then they usually have centers in the classroom that they can work on. Um, Childcare is on a first come first serve basis. So um, it, we do have limited spots based on the um, size of our classrooms and our staffing. So registration for childcare will start on February 1st. Um, if you are planning to apply for school choice, we recommend that on February 1st, you still apply for childcare, even if you, you won't know your school yet, but we will still timestamp your application and we'll hold it. And then once the school choice notifications go out, then we're able to distribute everybody to the schools that they are going to. So I don't wait, make sure you register if you really need childcare, um, that would be February 1st. Okay. That concludes our formal presentation for you this evening, but our staff is available to um, provide you an opportunity to ask and we'll answer questions for you. Um, I'd invite you to go ahead and um, include those in the chat so that um, we will either answer them to the whole group and each of our panelists will um, jump in and share a response orally to the group, or we'll, in, we'll actually answer them within the chat and you'll get your response um, sent back to you based on your specific questions. So we'll go ahead and open that up right now for our team to look at. And I see we have a number of questions there. Um, one question, Amy, I see is, um, is there a registration fee for childcare? So yes, there is a $50 um, application fee when you register. I, there's a question about registering for childcare. I'm sorry that I didn't mention that. So to register on February 1st, um, you would go to our website, which is cvusdchildcare.com and all of our registration will be online. Mrs. Wilson, um, if we could, there's a uh, couple questions about school choice that I wanna get to. And uh, let's see, um, for some reason now I can't see the question, but it was a question about if I'm, if I'm selected through the choice process, then what's next? And so um, you'll be asked to complete a school choice application if uh, you're interested in the TK program regardless of whether you're interested in attending your, your neighborhood school or not, because by definition, there are no neighborhood schools with our TK programs. So we take all the applications, everyone who's interested in TK, and we have a lottery uh, system in place, and then you are placed at a school based on that lottery. And so once, uh, once you are placed, um, you will be notified uh, by Mrs. Barnacy, as we mentioned earlier. And uh, at that point, you will start your registration process at your school site. So Mrs. Barnacy, do you wanna speak a little bit about that registration process and what that looks like after they have been approved for a school site? Sure, I can answer that. Um, 
after the lottery and after you get an email from me, you'll get an email that will have uh, three different options on it. It will either say you've been approved for your first choice. And then if you had a second choice school, that would be deleted. Or your email could say you've been approved for your second choice and you're still on the wait list for your first choice. Or your email will say you're on a wait list for both choices. So if you are approved for a school, at that time in the email that you get, it will instruct you to go to the district website to the pre-enrollment, which you then fill out, print, scan, and send to the office manager of the school you're approved for. Once they get that, they will contact you with uh, more information on how to get a registration packet to complete uh, to be able to actually register for that school. Thank you, Mrs. Barmacy. If I could, there's a couple other questions I'd like to kind of uh, get through here quickly. Uh, how do we know? How do we know what our homeschool is? And so, um, on our district website, if you go to enrollcvusd.org, I believe it is, it may be .com, uh, you'll see street maps for um, for by by school. I'd like to say that it's the closest elementary school to your home, most proximate to your home, but that may not be the case. So you really want to go by the street index. And um, if you'd like help with that, you can uh, email Mrs. Barmacy uh, at a Barmacy. You see her last name there. It's just a uh, first initial Barmacy at Conejo, USD.org uh, with your home address. And she would be happy to look that up for you uh, so that you know exactly what your home school is. Uh, there's a question about home about tours for schools. Our campuses will be initiate tours. Typically, it's been uh, starting as early as October um, uh, through. Typically, they run those through March and April. Uh, this year, with uh, school closure, uh, Mrs. Uh, Wilson, I'm not sure if school sites have set those up at this point. Uh, maybe that's something we can speak with principals about. Uh, but yeah, we typically do have school tours, and those are. Uh, announced and advertised on the school's websites. So you have those dates. And Mrs. Uh, Wilson, do you know if our school sites have initiated those school tours yet? No, we haven't scheduled those yet. And I'm also um, wondering if they might need to be done somewhat differently this, this current year, given the, the circumstances and conditions with um, social distancing. And so what we may end up doing is actually providing uh, multiple webinars where um, you know, principals are providing additional information about their sites and maybe they can share and show pictures of the campus and the facilities or, and or programs to, um, to parents and families. Um, so that might be one option or other options um, might be to um, provide, you know, individual tours um, to families where we're able to, um, you know, accommodate, uh, you know, the social distancing guidelines needed and, and not having a uh, you know, a large group of, of parents and families on campus at the same time. So um, it will take some creativity um, to figure out how to best offer those um, given our the guidelines that we're currently following. So we'll work with our sites to, to come up with a plan um, to be able to provide parents with, with some, you know, insight into the offerings of the school. Thank you for that, Mrs. Wilson. Um, there was a question about a, what, what about a kindergartner that wants to do online school? So um, currently, we are providing a remote teaching and learning program due to the COVID-19, um, assuming that by next fall, when your youngsters will be coming to school, uh, that's what we're planning for is a fall of 21, we will be back to, I'd like to use the word normal, I guess maybe it's safe to say that, uh, we'll be back to normal with full instruction uh, in classroom. Um, if that's not the case, uh, then obviously we'll continue with the Romo teaching and learning program or our hybrid blended uh, teaching and learning model that we're currently offering. Or if you would like your student to be in more of a online type of environment, more of a homeschool feel, we do have the Shine program, S-H-I-N-E, which you can find on our website, uh, which does offer kind of a distance learning program, um, more of a homeschool program that may better suit your youngster. And that's something that's also available to you. Uh, but we're assuming that we'll be back. We're hoping that we'll be back full time uh, next fall and uh, not doing an online program. If we are, it'll be district wide. It'll be offered. Um, but again, we're hoping that uh, we'll be back. 
Uh, there's a question about the reasoning for birthdays of TK and limiting to only half of the students in the incoming class. And so Mrs. Barnacy, that may be a question that you can best answer. Um, I can tell you that uh, this is uh, board policy, it's administrative regulation, it's also part of the education code uh, that dictates uh, those, uh, those birth dates uh, and those regulations. Mrs. Barmacy, is there anything you wanna add to that? Um, yes, when um, TK was first created uh, by the state, they were trying to pick up the students that were no longer eligible for kindergarten because back in the day you used to have to be six years old by December 2nd to start school for kindergarten. Then when they moved the birth date back, they did it uh, in a couple of years and brought it back to September 1st. So initially, uh, TK is typically for kids that are missing the date but used to be able to hit that date a few years back. So that would be September 2nd through December 2nd. Our district has expanded that a little bit to give a few more kids the opportunity. So we've backed it up to July 1st through uh, December 2nd. So we kind of have expanded the TK, but that is a finite uh, date right there. We don't expand it any farther than that. That's That was a choice that we made as a district. So hopefully that answered that question. Um, when does kindergarten registration start? Uh, and again, uh, Mrs. Wilson, do you want to take that one on? Yes, I believe we typically start um, at the beginning of January or mid-January. So we will um, provide that information to families and let them know when um, they can begin enrolling online and then providing the um, support documentation to, um, to the offices. So that's in, in January. Do you anticipate having any language dual immersion programs in the coming years? Um, well, I'm glad you added the S at the end of year because the idea of having a dual uh, immersion program, dual language immersion program in our district is a uh, topic that we're consistently talking about. I will tell you that with uh, our current situation under COVID-19 and that kind of uh, closure, the closure that we're dealing with, we are not currently planning for anything for the fall of uh, 21. Though, if uh, things normalize, we can get back to planning, uh, perhaps something for the fall of 22. Uh, but you never know, your, your question may give us the impetus to get back to the, to the drawing board. But uh, at this point, there, those discussions are not happening. But thank you for the question, it's a really good one. Uh, let's see, what are the dates for open houses? I assume they are staggered. They are, and they're really uh, mostly up to the sites. I know that some principals will hold um, individual uh, uh, tours with families or they will do group tours so they'll advertise that so you'll want to monitor the school's website as well as the district's website and our social media uh, which is uh, you know two or three good places for you to look for uh, that information. Next uh, what if I decide my child is not ready for kindergarten and my child does not qualify for pre-k can my child start kindergarten when she turns six? And so Mrs. Stonsigard, looks like you're, you're not in your head. So you want to take this one on for us? They get tired of hearing from the same person. I, think. I would say yes, that's, it's a parent choice as to when you um, enroll your student into kindergarten. Kindergarten is actually an optional grade level, but I would tell you, I highly recommend it not be optional for every child. So if you have an alternative that you could give your child a pre-K pre type experience and then enroll them in kindergarten in the fall when they're six, they would just be the same age as many kids that have come in from our TK programs. They would, they would line up with many other students. Andy, did you want to add something to that? Um, no, that was that was fine. Oh, okay, well, I saw your I saw you were unmuted. So Sorry. You to Sorry. Check. Okay, that's okay. Um, okay, the next question is a great one, uh, and we have a good answer for you. I think you'll I think you'll you'll be happy. If we have twins, they're eligible for TK. Would they be separated since it's a lottery? And the answer is no. Uh, we take our sibling our our twins and our multiples twins triplets quadruplets, if you have more than that, I bless you. We'll take them all together all at once. So uh, the way we work the lottery, uh, we put both of the students in there separately. And if one is chosen, we take them both in the lottery for that same school site. So rest assured that your twins will be together, whatever 
TK program they're assigned to. We have a sibling at the school that we are applying uh, to do TK. Do we have a special sibling lottery? Mrs. Barnacy, that's a good one for you. Uh, siblings, oh, sorry, I got it. Here. No, you're on. You're good. Now, can you hear me? Yep, you're good. Oh, sorry. Uh, yes, for the lottery, we pull twins and triplets together. So I have those marked in uh, when school choice applications come in, I mark on them the ones that are twins, and everybody is uh, placed in the lottery. And as the name comes up, if a name next to it has, says twin, then we find the their twin and we pull them next in the lottery. So they will be pulled together, twins and triplets. Okay, so we already got that one. There was a subsequent question. Oh, I'm sorry. What was the subsequent question? I was writing an answer to another question. <laughs> sorry. What was the gotcha. question? Gotcha. Uh, anybody remember the subsequent question? Because I think I dismissed it because I knew Andy was going to be able to answer it. Anybody want to help me out there? I was reading the next questions. It was if you have a sibling at the school, do you get a oh sibling a, priority? Oh. Sibling priority, yeah. Yes. Thank you, Mary Beth. Yes. You're welcome for TK. I guess I'm for K. Yes, TK. There is a sibling priority um, if you have a student that is attending that school uh, this year, and it used to be they had to be attending this year and the following year, but the policy has changed this year. As long as they are attending this year. You can apply for sibling priority and you only get the priority if you apply during the priority window, November 1st through January 31st. If you do after that, all priorities um, are gone. So the next question has to do with the actual choice application. Uh, the question is, how do I enroll in school choice? I only see enroll buttons and it sends to an application. Is there a school choice lottery link? So there's no lottery link. There's an application that you complete for school choice. Mrs. Barmacy, if you could figure out a way in the chat to put that link in the chat while we're having this meeting uh, or uh, drop it. So, in. it I think um, Sonia has it on her um, on her. OK, so Mrs. Yeah. Wilson has it on the PowerPoint presentation. Yes, she does. Yeah, great. So I'm going to go uh, ahead and, and show how to get there. So this is our district right website. Ahead, and um, if you go kind of three quarters to the bottom of the screen, you'll see the application and interest form available here. And this will take you to the school choice application and interdistrict transfer interest form page. So here you'll see the school choice application on the upper left. We have interdistrict transfer applications on the right. And then both forms are actually available in Spanish down below. So if I select the submit application here, that actually opens up the school choice application. And then from here, um, it will guide you through um, you know, this introductory letter. And then you click next, and then you begin providing your information, um, parent and guardian information, student information. And then you just continue to follow um, the links. And here you would select grade level, um, what your homeschool site is, the home, the site you might currently be attending, um, and then just additional information about um, the schools, your school or schools you're requesting. I, I know that there was an additional question in the um, chat about first in school, second choice. So first school choice and second school choice. And and Andy, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, we do both lotteries for each school separately for them. So they have a a different chance of, of making it um, in each school, you know, separately. Is that correct? Yes, your second choice, you have a much lesser chance of getting in because if you, whatever school you chose for your second choice, we do the lottery for everyone who chose that school as their first choice. So all the applications for that school for first choice get put together, put in a lottery, uh, made a list. And um, as we are approving them, they would be approved by that list. And if there's more applications, then the wait list starts. And then the second choice uh, options would then go to the bottom of that wait list. So you should always pick your first choice as the school you want the most because there's a lesser chance to get your second choice. Uh, the next question, Mrs. Champlin, would you mind taking this one on? It has to do with the start time for TK. What time will they're there? And maybe you could talk a little bit about their, their daily schedule, start time, end time, and but generally what happens in between, which we've done a little bit, but just a recap. 
Sure. It's very similar to kindergarten. It is, um, it's not a full day. We do, certain sites do have different start times, but it's always around 8.30. Um, and we do have a snack time and a lunch time. And then we are, our dismissal is anywhere from 1.20 to 1.30. So it is very much aligned with how kindergarten is on campus. All right. I hope that answers that question. The, the question had to do with, uh, we have a, a, a student at Wildwood, which doesn't have a TK and another student at Redwood in the same family. So from a driving standpoint, uh, hopefully that helps. Uh, though uh, we, we recognize the challenge. Uh, please know, uh, parents, that we are interested in placing TK programs um, at each of our school sites. Um, unfortunately, uh, some of the sites um, do not have capacity, do not have building capacity for TKs. Um, and so uh, that doesn't, that, that can happen at every one of our sites. So we will take our total enrollment for TK and we'll disperse it based on the request. So uh, if there's a school that's highly requested, we may place two TK programs. And uh, we have had instances where schools are not requested at all for TK. So then obviously we would not have a TK at that school. The issue at Wildwood specifically though is a space issue. Mr. Right. Lico, could I just add, if you're Please. looking for the timelines of schools, I think your best bet is to look at the school's website to see their specific times that their schools start. And, and I know when we're in person um, for this presentation, we often pass that out to parents, but um, I know that it, it is available online if you wanna just look at the schools, but um, for the specific times and starts of the school, but the TK is a, a six hour program. So the next question requires me to get out my crystal ball, which I, I didn't bring with me tonight. But it is, uh, do we know what next year will look like? And uh, we're coming back on 11-9 because we feel that the timing is right. Uh, we did qualify for a waiver and that coincided with the county uh, going from the purple level, which was the, if you will, the most restrictive le level to the red level as a county. And that allowed us to open up schools and start bringing back students and so we are, we are doing that as a district um, starting next week. We're excited about welcoming back our TK through second graders on Monday and Tuesday and our uh, third through fifth graders on Thursday and Friday. So by the end of next week, we will have all of our elementaries back in school. We're really excited about that. Uh, we just don't know what the future is going to hold, um, depending on what news you hear and, and what day it is, uh, we're seeing that 47 states are spiking right now. We're not one of them. So that's either really great news or it is we need to wait because, you know, we could be next. Uh, so I think there is some common sense that we can use. I will assure you that our district is doing everything feasible uh, to keep our students and our staff safe. Uh, with uh, disinfecting, with social distancing, requirement that students wear masks on campus as well as uh, staff. And so we're doing everything we can to have as healthy uh, return to school as we possibly can. But obviously the concern is that we are seeing spikes throughout the nation. So I wish I could I give you a definitive, this is what it'll look like, but I just really can't because um, it's completely unknown. And Lou, the next question is, is a question specific to, um, do we have programs or schools that allow us to have in-person instruction on certain days and distance learning on others? So if we were to continue to need to offer um, blended and remote and independent study options, um, looking ahead to next year, um, our current model, which more than likely, um, you know, we would continue with is that we have um, you know, teachers are teaching, we have our students broken up into cohorts, and so these are smaller groups, um, you know, of, of um, essentially students that are grouped together in a classroom, um, half are in one cohort, cohort A, half are in the other cohort, cohort B, and the teacher provides um, either that in person, whether it's, um, you know, in person on campus or in person um, in via Zoom, they provide that instruction to half their students while the other half are engaged in what we call reinforcing activities. And then it flip flops. So the second half of the day, the next group or cohort B gets that in-person either live or virtual instruction. 
and then um, the other students are engaged in that reinforcement. So instead of alternating them by days, um, we actually alternate them alternate them within the same day. So it's in person and then um, off campus, or it's live virtual and then independent reinforcement activities. All right, Mrs. Wilson, unfortunately, when I got knocked off, I may have lost some of the questions. So the first one that I have on my queue is from Jody um, and Tia, I think the name is. And I don't see that one any, anymore either. So you may have to, um, the open questions. Do I have to enroll my TK and K kids for next year um, in our neighborhood school? I really would like to see how it goes before hurrying up to put a mask on their tiny faces. Uh, no, you do not have to enroll. Um, I would recommend that you do so uh, and, 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 and have a space. Now, remember, you, you don't get to enroll your TK student in your homeschool because all of TK is done based on a lottery placement. So uh, TK across the district is a choice program. So you'll apply uh, through the school choice process for TK, and then you'll be placed at a site. Uh, if you have a kindergartner, uh, a rising kindergartner, I would recommend that you do enroll them at uh, your home site uh, because, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Mrs. Barmacy, that would give you a priority for that home site with your TK student. If you have a student already at your home school, yes. At any school, yeah. that, yes. Yeah, so um, I would recommend that. Um, and then, um, you know, again, we're hopeful that by the fall that we're going to be in a different place and, you know, all these protocols won't be necessary, but if they are, we're, we're ready either way. We'll be ready one way or the other. Um, so I see another question about um, support in the TK, TK classroom. Is there an assistant there or is it just the teacher and students? So um, would either of our TK teachers like to share more about that? Sure, I can do that. Um, yes, we are actually a couple of things. We do have the luxury, I will call it, because it's such a wonderful asset um, of the, the, the schools providing us an hour of an assistant a day so that we're able to do small group instructions at that time. And in a typical school year, you would see our children at eight different centers with the aid and often parent volunteers helping oversee that part of the program. And then um, about a third of the class is with the teacher doing a small group uh, academic instruction based lesson. And we're able to have those groups and that's where we do a lot of our differentiation is during that time when we have that assistant in our class um, that really allows us to do that. I did see something earlier in the chat too that Kindergarten and TK love our parent volunteer. So in a typical school year setting, um, you might find us begging for you to help us so that we can do these smaller groups and really meet the kids at where they're at and at their level and really provide for them the best opportunity that we can. So hopefully that helps answer the question. So I do see a few questions about um, submitting a school choice application and then not wanting to lose your homeschool spot. And so um, I did wanna just share, and, and one of the questions actually is, is the clarification. So um, a recommendation would be that you actually do your pre-enrollment at your homeschool. So go ahead and complete that process then await for the lottery results, which will happen in March. And then at that point, you'll be able to determine, you know, um, if you were able to um, get in on school choice or if you're on the wait list and, and where you are numerically on the wait list. And then you'll know from there um, that will help you make the decision as to, um, you know, which school to select and or um, you'll already have your pre-enrollment done at your home school. And again, you will not re you're not we will not enroll. Pardon, let me start over. You will not enroll in any school for TK until you uh, have been placed through our school choice and lottery process, and you've received that confirmation that your student has been placed at that site from Mrs. Barmacy. And again, that comes via email, and uh, we do that pretty promptly. So uh, you should get that uh, mid 
mid March, Andy, would you say mid March? At the latest, at the latest mid March. Mm -hmm. Mid March at the latest. So uh, I, there's a couple more questions that I see here, but there may be some others that uh, that are before these in queue. Like I said, when I got knocked off, I think I lost uh, some of the questions uh, regarding COVID. The CDC advised that with uh, social distancing, PPE, or a mask. A person is at risk for being exposed after 15 minutes within a 24 hour period. How's the district responding to this recent update? Um, the, we monitor these updates uh, continuously. Um, our understanding is that if you are adhering to social distancing, which is a six foot distance and wearing a mask, uh, that, um, that would keep, that would uh, um, limit your exposure. Um, my understanding is this 15 minutes within a 24 hour period has to do with uh, not adhering to the social distancing and in a case where you're not wearing a mask. And so we believe that uh, based on the information that we have, that um, if we're following those guidelines, that um, your exposure is uh, limited. Uh, however, based on your uh, question, I will certainly follow up tomorrow with our risk manager. Young students that are not wearing masks properly, how does the district plan to address this for the safety of the kids and the teachers alike? Uh, you know, I guess that is maybe something one of the teachers would like to respond to, but I think that that's kind of what we do in schools as we train our students to, you know, do things, uh, you know, as, as, as needed, as appropriate. Anybody want to, anyone want to venture into this one? Susan, go ahead. Thank you. Um, yeah, we, this is something we talked about at length at our staff meeting yesterday as we prepared for opening on Monday is how it's, we're going to approach it like any other time when we see a student who's not following our school rules, we're going to correct that. We're going to change and make sure that behavior has changed so that everybody is in a safe environment. Excellent. Thank you for that. And then it looks like we have one last question. It's for uh, Mrs. Mills. Uh, do they help with homework during child care? Yes, we do provide a time for students to work on their child care. And then our staff certainly, especially with our younger ones, can go around and help them read directions, make sure they understand what they need to do, make sure they have the materials they need to complete the activities that they're working on. So we do help with homework. All right, do we see any other questions? Looks like another one just popped up. What happens if uh, we were to move outside of the CVUSD district before our child begins the school year? That's a good question. Um, so as soon as you move out of our district boundary, then you do, you are required to apply for a inter-district transfer request, inter-district transfer. And that begins with your home district. So for example, let's say that you move from the Thousand Oaks area to any area outside. And I don't want to list one because I definitely want to say, why would you leave Thousand Oaks or the Canale Valley? But if you did move, uh, you would establish residence there and you would need to apply for a inter-district transfer request. It starts with that district, with your home district. So you would go to the Las Virginas Unified School District or Oak Park or Simi Valley District and request a release to attend Canale Valley Unified School District once that is um, processed and approved by them, they actually send it directly to our district office and uh, we will process it uh, uh, following that. I will tell you that we tend to release students immediately um, as we receive those requests to go to another district because we strongly believe in school choice. Uh, we're a district that believes that if you as a parent want your student at a particular school or within a particular school district, you should have that right to do that. I wish I could say the same for other districts. Um, I'm not sure that other districts respond as quickly. Um, sometimes that will lag for a couple of months, maybe longer. And what we would tell you to do is just to uh, contact them continuously uh, once a week as needed uh, and keep us informed as well. Let us know that you're applying for an inter-district transfer to come to the Conejo. And uh, if we can help out, uh, we're happy to do so. Um, and then, like I said, once the district releases, once your new home district releases, then we'll consider your application and we typically process those within about a week or two. I see questions popping up. Did we have a, I wanna, I wanna respect everyone's time. Do we have a time limit uh, tonight? Do we have an end time on this, Mrs. Uh, Wilson? Um, no, we actually don't. So we could 
Great. Let's take some more questions. Yeah, more questions. Um, I do see a few related to TK, and one of them are so for kids not eligible for TK, what skills are they expected to have when they enter kindergarten? Um, Mrs. Sonstegard, would you mind answering that one? Certainly. Well, we take children wherever they're at. So let me start with that. There, there is no expectation, expectation that they come in knowing everything. Otherwise, we're all without jobs. Our job is to teach them from, from wherever they are. But that being said, we would love for them to be able to read their own name, to be able to identify it, hopefully identify all the letters within their own name and uh, mo knows most of the letters by name. And that doesn't include sight or reading them at that point in the year. And that they can count verbally to, I, I'm gonna go with Mrs. Begg. I would love for them to be able to count to 20 by the time they came to kindergarten, get through those tricky teens as we call it. Yes. And then some, yeah. And then <laughs> some one-to-one -one counting as well, which is where children are actually counting a, a small number of objects and able to accurately count those as they go through. But I, I wanna assure you that we take children wherever they are. And so do our wonderful TK colleagues. They take, we take these children as they come to our classrooms and we polish them up, shine them up into little stars and they're either ready to go to kindergarten or ready to move on to first grade. So do not worry, have faith and you know, make learning more fun for your child, keep it fun. And there are learning opportunities in every day for a child at this age level. So do not stress over it. I do see a question. Is there um, no more registration for this school year? And if I'm understanding it correctly, um, so registration for kindergarten um, for next year begins in January. But if you are currently residing in the district and you want, you know, you have a, a elementary age child or, or even a middle school or high school age child, um, yes, you can register and enroll at, at any point during the school year um, as soon as you, you know, um, are here and in, in living and have a home that resides in, in the district and or if you are applying for an inter-district transfer, you can submit those applications as well. And what if TK students are already begun the school year? Uh, were approved through the sibling lottery, we move out of the district. So um, once you're enrolled in our school district um, and, and you're attending, and then you move out of our district boundary into another district, you still have to go through the process of applying for an inter-district transfer with that new school district. You need to be released by them. Uh, we do not require you to exit your school right away. Because within the county, we have kind of an agreement that if we have a continuing enrollment situation, that we, we, we typically honor uh, that request to go to a different school. So in that case, you start at school A in the Conejo Valley Unified School District. You're there for several months. You move to uh, outside of the district. You go to your new district. You apply for a school choice or excuse me, an inter-district transfer. And you let them know that it's, you're already attending in the Conejo. And uh, typically they will uh, release you. If they don't, you will call me in my office and we will walk you through an appeal process with the county that um, I most assuredly you will win and we will support that because that would be unconscionable for any district to do that. I can tell you that we would never do that uh, and, and we'll support you in, in getting through that. And can I just add one thing, Mr. Lichtel, if it's a team. Um, and they asked if they were approved through sibling priority, would they be able to stay? Our answer would be yes, but they would have to reapply to be released from their home district for kindergarten because TK release is only good for right. one school choice and inter-district transfers. That's only a one-year approval. Yeah, and uh, Ms. Pharmacy, that's a great point that you mentioned because uh, that's also true when you matriculate from fifth grade to sixth grade. Um, when, when a student changes a grade span, they have to reapply through the inter-district transfer process. And again, uh, that's a continuing enrollment situation. And we typically do approve those, um, kind of an agreement within the county, we do approve those without question. So I see a couple more questions uh, coming up. I wanna limit this for the next, uh, for these next few questions, because again, uh, 
our teachers probably still have some planning to do before they get back into the into the Zoom world tomorrow. What if I enroll my neighborhood school? We decided to go to a non-district school. Then at that point, you would uh, withdraw from that home site, from that home school, and you would enroll at your non-district school. So um, your your enrollment at any one of our schools, you can simply rescind at any time uh, by simply uh, withdrawing from the school. Uh, but do know that uh, we wait for there's some records that we release immediately. There's other records that we wait for the subsequent school that you enroll your child in uh, to release, and that includes uh, their CUNE file. So, uh, and that's a state law. We have to uh, we have to wait until we know that you're enrolling in a different school before we fully release you. And uh, Leanna Parrish asked a question, but I don't see the entire question. I only see is that per month of or for the year. So I'm not sure what that relates to. Maybe you can retype that. And so we'll take Mrs. Hickman's question and Leanna Parrish's, and then we will close our uh, webinar. Uh, is there a kindergarten assessment that happens in the spring before the fall school year? My older child did one years ago. Um, who would like to take that one on? I'll take, I, I can Thank take you. that one. Thank you, um, Susan. There are some schools that I wouldn't really call it an, a kindergarten assessment. In some of the schools, we do have a time in the spring where students come who have already been enrolled into that school come and it's kind of more of a get to know you for the child. And they come to the classroom and we spend some time with them and talk to them, get an idea about you know whether they know how to count, just to get to know them and also gives them the opportunity to see the kindergarten playground and what a kindergarten classroom does and we started this to basically alleviate a lot of anxiety of coming to kindergarten in the spring so as they were talking about it as a family over the summertime before we um, came to school in the fall students understood what was going to be happening and where they were going to be going carrie do you have anything else you want to add okay nope that's perfect uh, thank you thank you for that uh, there was a question about who do we contact with any further questions so i will tell you that uh, Mrs. Barmacy is probably uh, one good place to start. Um, a lot of times she may let you know that uh, you'll want to contact maybe the school site. And if that's the case, then uh, we'll direct you in that way. I am going to write her um, email address in the chat, which I think has probably gone up there a couple times already, but so that you all have it. If you have any questions, this is a great place to start uh, with Mrs. Barmacy. Uh, she's the senior administrative assistant in the instructional services department. Is extremely experienced with all these issues, and so uh, I would start there. And so, um, Mr. Lichtel, we have that yes, one yes. last question from yes. Leanna and Parrish. Oh, great! And so the question is: the price for daycare is that per oh, year or per month? Sure. So the enrichment hour it's one hundred and thirty-two dollars per month. And then if you have the need the enrichment hour plus the before and after school care, that's 517 per month. All right. Okay. So I want to thank our 77 participants that are still with us. I think we had about 125 at one point. I want to thank our uh, teachers and our staff members, uh, obviously Mrs. Barmacy, uh, but our teachers, thank you, Mrs. Champlain, Mrs. Stovall, Mrs. Stonsgaard, and Mrs. Begg and also uh, Amy Mills, who uh, coordinates our child care program. And of course, Mrs. Wilson, Director of Elementary Ed. Thank you so much for your time this evening. Really appreciate it. Please reach out as you have more questions and we wish you a very, very good evening. Thank you very much.